Thank you for joining us. One of the most important causes in our role today is to promote understanding, friendship and cooperation. Not only for Israel and Jewish people, but for all people. Our guest today is Mark Mayer Apple, the founder of the Bridge Multicultural Project. Its mission is to unite and energize people of every racial, ethnic, cultural and religious group across New York and the entire USA. He'll tell us more about this Bridge MCP following these messages. Life Extension Foundation was established in 1977 and is now the world's largest consumer-based anti-aging organization. Life-saving achievements taken for granted today were pioneered by Life Extension Foundation decades ago. Life Extension is currently funding $10 million a year in research on significantly extending a healthy human lifespan. Diseases that once plagued humanity have largely been eradicated by scientific innovation. Three leading causes of death in 1900 are no longer leading killers today. Smallpox killed millions before it was eliminated in 1979. Life Extension funds research to fight biological aging so that it also will become a relic of the past. To learn more, log on to lifeextensionfoundation.org. When I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. A miracle. Oh, it was beautiful, magical. And then they showed me a world. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. celebrated this beautiful Passover meal with the matzah, with the bitter leaves, with the eggs, with the wine, with all the different six portions for thousands of years. When we sit down, we close our eyes and we feel like we just walked out of Egypt a day ago. And that's part of the commitment, the tradition of the Jewish community. But perhaps more importantly, this is a time when we also remember the resilience of the Israelites in their decade-long quest for a home that was free from slavery and from oppression. And while our Jewish friends and communities have come so far and are inextricably tied into our community and they're part of our future, um, the fact is the ugly side of hate and anti-Semitism still exists in the world. You know, if hate had no consequence, it would be, okay, fine. But hate leads to dastardly acts. Hate leads to violence. Hate leads to murder. Hate leads to horrible things in our society. And ladies and gentlemen, we are all witness to that in history. We don't have to go back 50 years ago, 100 years ago. It's happening every single day because of people's hatred that they go out and do terrible, terrible things. This organization has a distinguished record of developing programs to build bridges, not walls, and to build those bridges among different communities. They have demonstrated that whether we worship at a synagogue, at a mosque, at a church, or in a temple, we as people of good faith have the ability to work together constructively. There are certainly challenges uh, that we all face in the current environment. Individuals who have 
threatened to build walls rather than bridges, have seized control of substantial parts of our nation's government. The results have been as promised, a ban on Muslims entering the United States and attacks on immigrant families who have been here for many years. And I want to know, I want you to know that even if you're not a Muslim or not an immigrant, these policies involve all of us. The government that would ban Muslims today could ban Pentecostal Christians tomorrow or Jews tomorrow. A government that could deny the civil rights of an immigrant could also deprive you of your civil rights. The rhetoric from the current administration has been reflected in the dramatic increase in the frequency of hate crimes that we're experiencing in our very own New York City. As a Muslim, I'm a Muslim, and I'm very proud to be here tonight, here. But Muslims, I believe in Islam, and Islam said, I means I, S means shall, A means all, L means love, M means mankind. I shall love all mankind. That is Islam. And Islam means submission to Allah, submission to God, but that also, yeah, uh, respect all the religions. With us now is Mark Appel. It's a real pleasure to finally have you on the show. Pleasure to be on your show, sir. Mark, you have this organization you founded, The Bridge. Tell us about it. We started The Bridge Project four years ago. It's based in New York City. We felt that there was a need to have a multicultural center where people of all faiths, all religions, all races could come together under one roof. I mean, there's so much activity going on in the United States of America, so many organizations that I've worked with that work promoting uh, unity among different racial groups. But what we needed, what I felt was needed, was a central place, an actual facility, a gallery, a community facility that everyone, all religions and all faiths, could come into this facility and dialogue together. Dialogue between different faiths and different cultures are not easy. The culture of an Afro-American and a Jew and a Mexican it's very hard for them to socialize and get to know each other. But if you have a cultural center, which we created, we have events that everyone can share in. We've had educational programs. We've had safety programs, community programs, advocacy programs. We've had programs where Jews, non-Jews, Christians, all faiths come together and contribute and work together towards helping people in the, in, in the country. We've had blood drives. We've had educational screenings, healthcare screenings. We've had so many events in the last four years where people from all faiths come into our facility and because they're here on a mission, whether it's a blood drive, whether it's a jazz concert, whether it's a Passover Freedom Seder, whether it's an iftar event, but if people are in the same venue at the same time, there has always gotta be some dialogue some curiosity. Hey, really? I've been living here for so many years in New York City. I've seen so many people walking around with either a yarmulke or walking around with, you know, as, as in, with Muslim garb, but we really never had a chance to talk. So this is a facility where people talk. Talk, we've made a lot of progress. We've had so many coalition partners that we've dealt with. We've dealt with the Turkish community. We've dealt with the Bangladesh with the Muslim, all the Muslim communities, uh, all the Jewish communities, many of the Afro-American communities, and it's been amazing that people who live together in New York City for over 20 years and see each other on the street on a daily basis, pass each other on the street, but because of shyness, because of cultural differences, they never really understood others' culture. They didn't understand it. 
So okay. this is a way informally, like the most, the best place to network in the business community is probably in an elevator, right? Because there's no pressure, it's not a meeting style, it's not a set up meeting where you have to feel pressured, but it's an informal place. If you have 200 people in my facility attending a Passover Freedom Seder, a unity Seder attended by major Congress people, people, the head of Medgevis College, the people of, 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 of honor, and when we sit down at a Passover Freedom Seder and we read parts of the Quran and we read some of the Christian faith uh, stories about, from the New Testament, everybody seems to smile. So at the bridge, I'm so proud of not only of these events, but of the outcome of these events. People walk away from our cultural center smiling and say, hey, today, Sunday, I've learned something. I learned something about life. I learned something about diversity. I learned something about culture that's not my culture or religion that's not my religion. I've learned something. And that is, that is something very special. Absolutely is. And we covered one of your blood drive events where Jews, Christians, and Arabs were donating blood side by side. That was pretty spectacular. It was unbelievable. We had a blood drive. It was actually one of them was sponsored by the borough president of Kings County, Eric Adams. And it was amazing. I mean, you could see 12 beds stretched out. People, when they you give blood, you lie down in the bed and you probably spend a half hour on the bed, you know, before the syringes are put in and blood is taken from you. And you could see rabbis, Muslims, Afro-Americans, all of them sitting and giving blood. It was just a beautiful event and everybody afterwards, you know, grabbed some refreshments and it was fantastic. And, and the thing is we raised 52 pints of blood that day. 52 pints of blood can save two, three hundred children's lives at an emergency room. Emergency rooms, by the way, in, um, in the United States always have a problem with any shortage of blood because even if they collect enough blood from the community, which they always have blood drives in the community, but blood has a certain uh, shelf life. So we have a commitment to constantly replenish that supply of blood you know, to the community. Absolutely. And uh, I'd like to ask you to share with our audience what motivated you to found the bridge? Well, that's a very good question. I am the son of Holocaust survivors. My mother and my dad during World War II were interned in a concentration camp. My mother was freed as a free person in Auschwitz. And she was actually freed by the Russian army, which the American army came in right afterwards. My mother looked at those troops, those American troops that came to feed her with the first glass of water that she's had in months, the first bowl of soup, the first fresh fruit that she's had in two and a half years. And she looked closely at the eyes of the soldiers, the American soldiers that were hungry. They came thousands of miles from across over the Atlantic to come. And she looked at the faces and she noticed something. First of all, that was the first time she actually saw a black person. In it. And she looked at the faces of the American soldiers, and they, some of them were Asian, some of them were Spanish, some of them were Jewish, some of them were black. They all came and representing one thing, freedom and unity. And so many millions of people gave their lives for my parents to be able to rebuild their lives, come to this country. It's the least I can do. I grew up in New York City, and despite what you read about in the media today about friction, I don't recall in New York City a friction between one community and the other community. It never happened, regardless of what it says in the newspaper. It never happened that a community, you know, the community that we're located is a strong Haitian community, Jewish community, Pakistani community, Bangladesh community. Everybody gets along. Tell us about the actual facility you have. The facility is three stories of 3,000 square feet each. Two floors are complete, the third is halfway complete. So the first floor is actually built as an art gallery a multicultural art gallery. So we have artists from around the city that come to our center and display their art. So we have different art, some art we keep at the location, okay? So the first floor is very open space with all the plasma televisions, brick walls, very modern space. And we have an affiliation. We let nonprofit organizations that are small community-based organizations that do not have an infrastructure 
we help them. So we let them use our space for events. So the space is used almost 365 days a year, whether it's uh, a jazz night, whether it's music, uh, uh, religious holiday uh, events, whether it's New Year's, whether dance lessons or music lessons or educational classes, the facility is used 365 days a year. Uh, the second floor is actually uh, the conference room, executive offices, and also a resource room where we have a library of various different books. And we use that also as a, for our music lessons and for other types of educational programs. So the second floor is basically more uh, for the educational programs that we do up there. We had uh, the educational programs that we did in the last few months were CPR training, uh, other kinds of training, emergency training, uh, emergency response training, uh, hurricane safe training. That's part of the educational initiatives that we do and that's on the second floor. In this information age, it's so important for good causes, especially to be made known to the public. So other than being on uh, this Jewish program, the Shalom Show on TV, which will be on ABC in Florida, and it's going to be on DirecTV, Time Warner in your neck of the woods in New York, Comcast, in fact, reaching 44 million homes nationwide, which is nice exposure for the beautiful message that you're conveying here today. However, what other publicity have you been able to get for your important cause? Well, if you go to our website, which is thebridgemcp.com, we have a section, different sections on all our programs. Some of the, you can see videos, you can see uh, many of our programs and uh, many different flyers on it. But we've been highlighted in, in, most, in most media uh, across the country, you know, across the country. Even the New York Times did a story, we don't have it yet on the website. Uh, we originally started, our mission before we started the bridge was keeping children safe from sexual predators. We worked on uh, special education, which is very important for preschool children to get uh, education started at an early age, at birth, which is an entitlement in America, and people are not aware of it. So we've done a lot of advocacy work. We, we go to Albany a lot, we go to Washington, D.C., and we come together, but we go to Albany or we go to Washington, we go as a team. We go as Jews, as blacks, as Muslims, better health care, better education, better early intervention, whatever it is, we go as a team. And if we go as a team, we feel that's where the strength is. The strength is that we can do more by being a coalition of different religion and faiths to move the government. Government needs to be moved. And the government is just like any other business. The more you nudge them, the more you bother them, They'll, take, they'll make that the agenda. They have so many agendas in Washington, D.C. today. And they have actually, more, right? Yeah, sorry for interrupting, but you also have traveled with many VIPs, Bloomberg and others, to Israel. Yeah. Tell the audience about some of your world travels. Well, that's, that's not, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a board member of the American Jewish Congress, uh, which we, once a year, usually in November, we bring 26 mayors from around the world, from different countries, including the United States. As a matter of fact, Last year, the, Miami, the mayor of Miami Beach was on our thing. But we take 26 mayors around from around the country, and we bring them to Israel for about 10 days. And we meet with the prime minister. We go to Yad Vashem, which is the memorial for the Holocaust. We also um, go to Nazareth. We go to Christian places. And we cover a wide area of Israel. And it's brought about a tremendous goodwill uh, you know, we're spending 10 days together Absolutely. with the mayor of Panama City in Panama and the mayor of Miami Beach. And this, it, gets, it gets to be a bond. You know, we had the mayor of a little city in Ukraine, Lvov, you know, who never met a Jew, who never was to Israel. And actually three years ago, we had the mayor of, um, of Buenos Aires as one of our 26 mayors. Subsequently, he became the head of Argentina, the president of Argentina. Very interesting. And yeah. Jason Isaacson with AJC has been guest on this show too just a couple of months ago. That's the American Jewish Committee or American Jewish Congress. You know. Oh, I see. Yeah, so yeah. many good organizations. Right, so many it's not good. always easy to differentiate, but they're all doing the same good work for the same right. good cause, I would say, say that. Uh, what I'd like to ask you is to share with our audience some of your background. Well, my background was really, I ran a large non-for-profit for children of special needs, starting at birth, age birth. Uh, a lot of crack-addicted babies, 
a lot of fetal alcohol syndrome babies. So we had one a large, large center. Uh, we also did advocacy for special ed and for special needs children. We did a lot of advocacy work. And that's where I learned that one person can make a difference. We think that the people in Washington, the people in the Capitol, that they make a difference? No. If parents get together, or special needs kids, and they put pressure on your government legislature, your local legislature, your state legislature, your governor, your president of the United States, that we can make a difference. Because if you look at the, if you look at the uh, goals and objectives and the accomplishments or the expected accomplishments of elected officials, you'll see they, are, they respond to us as a community. So for us to sit back and say, hey, the governor is not providing enough Social Security, the governor is not providing safety, well, get together in the community and do it. If you put pressure on your state government legislation, we will get things done in America. Mark, this is also very interesting, and I'd like you to share with our audience the fact that you were honored in the Capitol. Tell us about that event. Oh, that was one of our highlights of our organization since its founding. The once a year, the president has uh, designated uh, Jewish Heritage Month in Washington, D.C., in the United States Capitol. And in the uh, caucus room, in the John F. Kennedy caucus room, the Bridge Multicultural was uh, honored for its work, for the work that my organization does in bringing people together. And we came to Washington, D.C., we spent a day together, but we came as a group of Muslim women <laughs> and Afro-American women and all kinds of different people that from across the country that came to join me in, in accepting this honor. And we had a chance uh, to get this honor from Congressman Kennedy, uh, who was a strong civil rights activist, and Congressman John Lewis, who we spent a lot of time with. And Congressman Lewis, of course, is America's hero, being beaten up in Selma and becoming a United States Congressman. And John Lewis looked at me and he said to me, Mark, he says, I can't believe it. You know, with all the work that I've been doing for 30, 40 years, lecturing across the country to universities, schools, libraries, lecturing about diversity and unity, but you guys are actually doing it. Our message is that we want to help other communities across the country develop that same model. You need to have a venue. You cannot have a slogan, a speech, or a one-time event. Diversity must be an ongoing process of dialogue. And the way you have dialogue is have a cultural center where you have different kinds of community events where people of all faiths can come together. And I said before, just talk. Absolutely. And you know, speaking of talk, everything begins with talk and then deeds follow. And speaking of deeds, Shari Arison, the co-owner of Carnival Cruise Lines, owning basically all the cruise lines in the world just about, uh, instituted this Good Deeds Day. And one of the thoughts I presented to her, and you, you and I discussed this a, a while ago, the idea of events such as a Shalom tour to the Holy Land, to Israel, with people of different beliefs. as your organization, some of the organizations you are involved with uh, pursue all the time. But also a Shalom Show cruise where people can go for a week from New York or South Florida and different background, people of different backgrounds can interact here, lectures by you and other people. So how's that going, that thought? Well, it's, it's a good idea. We do have uh, in New York City, the Jewish Community Relations Council that does about a dozen tours bringing different ministers of religion to Israel and, you know, there's, no, there's nothing like sight, being on sight of, of a country. And talking about Israel, you know, we're not a, of course, we're not a, even though I'm a proud Zionist and supporter of Israel, but that's not what my organization is. But I do want to say that the people of different faiths that we had go to Israel and see, and see an actual democracy. See for themselves. See for themselves an actual democracy. Mark, what are your plans for the future with the bridge and in other endeavors? Well, this year we initiated the Unity in Action Task Force. That's a task force of volunteers that we put together from different cultures and different religions. And we actually go out into the community and we're a response team to social emergencies. I hope that across the country we can duplicate the Bridge Multicultural Project. Every community that has a community center should devote part of its programs and services to diversity. 
We have so many beautiful communities across the country, and they're all different kinds of communities. Community Northeast United States and South is a completely different kind of community and kind of people. And if you had, similar to a public library, but just any community center, create one day a day of diversity where people could come in, listen to whether it's a lecture, whether it's a blood drive, whether it's mammography uh, that's done, or any kind of program where people can come together. Because I believe if people of different, completely different beliefs and completely different ideology sit down at the table and talk, that leads to respect. That leads to a better society that we all need today. Mark, this program and the other activities you are so closely involved with are so essential and the outreach you're doing is so very important. It's a real privilege and pleasure to have met you today. Let's do this again sometime in the future. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Bill Falloon, co-founder of the Life Extension Foundation. We're the world's largest anti-aging consumer medical group. For the first time in history, we can invite you to an event called the Revolution Against Aging and Death. This is an event that we are co-sponsoring because science has reached a level where we can talk realistically about converting older people into much younger individuals from a biological standpoint. It's gonna emanate in San Diego August 4th through 7th at the Revolution Against Aging and Death Conference. The first conference, by the way, that Life Extension has co-sponsored since 1986. It's that exciting for us to put out this kind of an effort to invite you to attend and meet the Life Extension staff and scientists. I encourage you to log on to radfest.com, enroll, and spend the most exciting weekend of your life. Anywhere else, this would be a vacation on the Mediterranean. But here, it's also a journey into history. From modern Tel Aviv to the ancient cities of Herod, the Romans, the Crusaders. The history of Israel lives in all of us. Come find the Israel in you. This brings us to the end of our special show for today. I'm Tamar Micha, and on behalf of all of us here at RCP Productions, thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.